Here at the University of Oregon, we have a lot of equipment we manage on a daily basis. Our main responsibility is to just manage the day-to-day -day equipment operations for every sport, whether it be football helmets, footwear, basketball jerseys, track and field singlets, ordering, managing, budget management. We, you know, we're very fortunate to do what we do. We're behind the scenes. If we're not noticed, that's a good day. There's five full-time equipment managers. We have two full-time interns and about 40 student managers that work across all sports. There's three of us full-time at the Casanova Athletic Center equipment room. In that equipment room is football, baseball, acrobatics and tumbling, lacrosse, and soccer. I'm the football equipment administrator. I have one full-time intern under me and 10 students. In the HDC, it's football only, so it's a lot. We have a new locker room here, a small equipment room next to the locker room. We have an equipment room at Matthew Knight Arena. We have one full-time equipment manager there on a daily basis. I have uh, men's women's basketball, men's women's golf, and volleyball. And then we also have Matt Court. We have a large equipment room at Matt Court. And we have an intern and a full-time staff member there. Well, downstairs here in MacArthur Court, we have locker room for softball and men's and women's tennis. We have track and field that comes by just about daily to either pick up shoes or uniforms that come to the equipment window. We plan well in, well in advance for our games, like the road trips and home games and stuff. Um, we know exactly what the team's gonna wear the week before the game, so we'll have everything packed, ready to go, probably three days before they leave. So, I mean, we have their uniform dent, like already packed. We have their game loot, we have what color socks, we have you know, the travel suit, we'll have a travel bag with all their travel shoes and their travel suits. For softball, the road trips are probably the biggest part. We pack up pretty much everything for them. We will set up the uniforms, we'll print off a sheet that shows which uniforms they're wearing each day. We'll actually roll them up and put them in their bag, pack for them. They pretty much just have to bring their toothbrush. My responsibilities for baseball include all the ordering, all of the equipment needs in terms of laundry, set up practice, clean up practice, set up games, clean up games, and all the little details that come with equipment operations throughout practices and games. In the case of Brad and his upperclassmen managers, they'll order equipment, they'll fix things. Part of being an equipment manager for baseball is a little bit of a hybrid role where we're just helping in any way possible so that the players are able to play and the coaches are able to coach. I can't tell you how happy I am that, that Brad Gerard is our equipment guy. He's, uh, he's a very low maintenance guy. You don't have to worry about him getting his job done. He thinks outside the box. He has great pride in his work. To a man, our, our players and staff love him to death. Football is the, the main sport as far as the amount of equipment, the amount of helmets, the amount of uniforms. Um, and footwear and gloves, combinations. You know, it's a, just the, the everyday maintenance of helmets, shoulder pads, all the equipment that you can imagine that goes into a football team. Kenny's the general, you know, of, of that whole whole crew and, and does a great job. He's, he's a guy, again, that is highly competent but has a, a great desire to, to, to get better. Our job is somewhat routine, but it actually changes so much from day to day depending on what's coming in, what's going out, new players being added, and there's a whole you know, couple steps that, that make you know, our, uh, our job fun. And the equipment guys are always the, the, the players' favorite guys and the coaches' favorite guys too, on, especially you know, if there's any kind of distribution, which around here there's a lot of, we have a lot of Christmases in terms of, of equipment, uh, and we're very, very fortunate in that way. The Nike partnership is, is great. We interact with them weekly, if not daily. Nike plays a huge role. They're always talking to us about what we need or what we can do to make the product better. Our relationship with them is a lot of back and forth, a lot of bouncing ideas off each other. Our players 
collaborate with the designers and then Kenny and I sit down with, with those guys at the end and talk about, you know, I'm, I'm not the, the fashion guru by any stretch. I interact with Nike regularly, so they, they have people in our, you know, visiting with me probably once every other week. You know, I'd, I'd say we go visit up Nike campus maybe two, three times a year, kind of go look at some of their stuff that they're trying to unveil and roll out and stuff and uh, a lot of their secret projects, so it's that's part's really, really fun to see. Yesterday I had, had a meeting all day with the track group. The week before there were a couple guys from Nike baseball and softball down. Um, they're always around, they're always trying to trying to improve and trying to set the bar a little bit higher. We start uh, meeting with them, looking at designs of uniforms and footwear you know, 18 and 24 months in advance. The meeting we had earlier this week was we were talking about um, the products for the, actually the fall of 15. So we're kind of already getting onto that and you know that's just kind of the, the cycle of the way things work. So It's been a great relationship and, th and that started with hey I you know maybe these cleats are a little narrow or this you know would feel better if you had this or this might look cooler. But we're testing stuff for them, we're testing gloves, we're testing cleats, we're testing base layer products, anything that you can imagine Nike's trying to send it to us. But I think at the, it's never at the uh, expense of the athlete, the performance of the athlete, but the design is still really, really cool. The really cool part about that is a lot of the people at Nike that we work with on a daily basis are ducks. They're graduates of Oregon. They played here, they were student athletes here, so they get it. And so it's an awesome partnership to be able to work with them. We're very fortunate to have them. Yeah, so we use a, we use a program called SportSoft. Every Nike shoe box or t-shirt, polo, anything that comes in has a barcode already on it. We use the barcodes, we scan them into our system, gives us a correct count of how many we have of each, each item, and then it makes it easy also to scan out to our athletes. Um, then we can know exactly who has what, when they have them, and we're also able to collect things when we need them. Then it helps me with ordering to see how much um, how much stuff we're, you know, where we're at with our inventory counts and what we're going through the most of and, you know, you can kind of see the trends of, you know, it's maybe something's a little more popular this year than I anticipated. It helps our whole, our whole process. Most equipment managers, if not all, start off as student managers. When you're a student, you kind of learn the business and you decide that that's what you kind of want to make a career out of. So I was um, uh, the director of equipment at the University of Kentucky. Um, and I had started there as a student in the mid-90s. I started uh, as a student manager in 2007, working uh, four years with softball. I started as a student manager when I was at Marshall University. I started here in 1997 as a student manager. Kind of decided my freshman year, the first couple of weeks, that like, this is what I want to do. After I graduated, a uh, position opened up in 2011, joined the crew. The Oregon baseball program was starting. I tried out for the team, unfortunately didn't make it, uh, but heard about student manager opportunities. And the rest is history. Oh, I started, um, my first day on the job was June 11th, 2012. Never been to Oregon before and didn't think I had a shot in the world at the job, but I just wanted to apply and just see if they called back. They ended up offering me the, the job and I didn't have to think about it. I like, didn't really even think about if they would offer me the job and then they did. and. I, I didn't even think about it, I just, I'm like, I'm going. I graduated in 2002, left the business and left the school for about five years. Came back in 2008, a year later I moved over to football, so I've been with football since 2009-2010 uh, season. You get, you know, the basics of equipment managing at that point. Usually the next step is an internship somewhere, whether it be at the collegiate level or the NFL. I usually start about 6 o'clock, the, the students and the intern will come in about 6.30. We handle obviously a lot of equipment and so what we do wouldn't be possible without the hard work of that staff. Those guys do a great job. Equipment guys are the first guys here. They're on the field getting things lined up, spread out, and then it could be a last second transition. Hey, we might go scrimmage in Autzen and they're, they're doing the, moving the whole program to there. But starting from the normal kind of things of all the equipment, 
to being a referee, to spotting the ball, which is something that, that is really big in, in how we operate. Start to finish, they're, they're there earliest, and they're always the last guys uh, out of the locker room, and we try to help them as much as possible to, to, to make their job a little easier. During the season, it's a lot longer days. Obviously, with uh, being on quarters, you know, we have the first three games without school, so our guys are working long days during the month of September all the way up until school starts. And when school starts, it's you know early mornings. We have morning practice, so they're here till about noon every day, and then they'll, sometimes they're coming back at night at 5 to finish up for the day. They're a huge part of it, and, and they know it. They take pride in it and have been exceptional. Those guys do everything. It's some long days. Those guys definitely put in their work. We have about 40 student managers that are really, really hardworking. We could not do our job on a daily basis without them. The student managers are one of the most important pieces to this whole operation. A lot is asked of these guys. They will typically arrive a couple hours before a game or a couple hours before practice. They'll work practice. They'll stay late handling all those needs for us. And so we definitely couldn't do it without student managers. They're put in some high pressure roles and, and things need to be set up, cleaned up, done at, at certain times. It kind of varies depending on the season. Right now, we're just here from basically about 12 to 6, sometimes later, just setting up for practice, making sure the guys and the coaches have everything they need. There's a lot asked of them. Each role for the student managers within the sports is, is going to vary, but the student managers are the biggest piece to this whole operation. Our staff's a tight-knit group. We all, uh, we all can relate. We were all student managers at one point in time. And so we can relate with our student managers when they're having a tough day or you know, they've got midterms or final exams coming up and there's a lot of stress. We've been there, we've done that, we understand that. When you're spending so many hours together, you really get to know the, you know, know the guys that you work with really, really well, which is awesome. Some of my best friends in the world are the guys I was student managers with just because you, know, you kind of go through the same experiences and get to know guys really well and develop some great friendships. My favorite piece of Oregon gear, um, I get pretty excited when I see either the new softball cleats or maybe some sweet track spikes that came in or some travel shoes that our tennis team have. Those little orange boxes, uh, they make my day. And anything that I didn't order that this kind of Nike sends along without like, kind of without warning and uh, it's really fun, like seeing some of the, the Jordans and the, the really cool promo footwear, it's like just, just any little, little surprise like that. My favorite uniform that we wear is the uniform we wore against, it's actually a couple years ago, against Arkansas State with the, the yellow helmet and the apple green jersey and the, and the yellow pants. And I think that's just a kind of a, it's like a classic look for us, but with a, you know, with modifications to it, with a, a little bit different colors and the new helmet, so. I would say my favorite piece of equipment would be our, our apple green Hirachi cleats, baseball cleats. If I were a player here, that would be absolutely my favorite thing to wear. The combat ducks we wore in Korea, um, those were definitely probably the coolest Oregon basketball jerseys. Other than that, I like, I like the throwback tall fur ones too. I need to say the fans always get mad if we're not in green and yellow, so I have to say green and yellow, but uh, uh, we have a lot of school colors. Um, and so I'm a fan of whatever they put on us. The simple white pinstripes are my favorite uh, on the road, the simple Gray pinstripes are my favorite, uh, but I haven't realized that the players like some of the extravagant uniforms. Seeing the uniforms like a year and a half in advance, like when those finally come in and like seeing the finished product, and uh, it's really, really, um, I'm proud to be a part of that, I guess. So. You know, as soon as I think that I have found something that this is my favorite jersey, or this is my favorite pair of shoes, or this is my favorite helmet, something changes, and it's like, wow. This is really cool. Check this out. Um, that's, this is my new favorite. So it changes all the time. I will tell you this. Um, there's some things in the works right now that are really, really cool that uh, we're really excited about. And once they're unveiled, I think people will be like, wow, you know, Nike and Oregon has set the bar really high this time. It's a blessing and a dream. It's, it's pretty amazing to work here. Uh, I was an Oregon Duck growing up my whole life and then went to school here. Seeing the, all the hard work that you put in, what it accomplishes and what it achieves and stuff like that, it's just awesome for me. We don't look at it as a job. I think we all look forward to coming in every day. You know, the really cool part about what we do and what I do personally is seeing the end result, looking at 
24 or 36 months of designs and back and forth with student athletes or coaches and looking at designs, looking at footwear and how it's built and how it evolves over time to when it's finally unveiled to see the student athletes, you know, the smile on their face and, the, and knowing that we had a little bit of part to do with that. So that was pretty cool.